Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out where your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at Gazelle dot com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 81. This is the show where we talk about what's new in the App Store. We find tips, we find news, we find tricks, and we tell you what's worth your time and your money. I'm Sarah Lane, your guide to all things iOS, and I've done a lot of iPhone app research just for you. Number one. So yesterday, a little chat app called CryptoCat went live in the App Store. Now. Besides the fact that it's called CryptoCat and therefore very cool already, it's a really simple concept. You give yourself a name, you give your conversation a name, and then you can chat with any of your friends using their chosen handle with the same conversation over a layer of built-in encryption so that this conversation is impossible to intercept by anyone else. What's interesting about this App Store approval, though, is that it initially was rejected by Apple back in December. It was already known as a desktop app and a browser plugin that uses something called OTR, which is off the record messaging, which is a cryptographic protocol that provides strong encryption for instant messaging conversations. It's, it's a known thing. The app's founder though, Nadim Kobisi, called Apple's reasons for denying CryptoCat on iOS illegitimate. But the reasoning was kind of a mystery to all of us. Well, The Verge spoke to him about CryptoCat, and although he says he can't talk details as part of his developer non-disclosure agreement, he did say, quote, there was some very important help given by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and we ended up scheduling a conversation with Apple, and after a while, Apple was very gracious and understanding. So still kind of a mystery, but suffice it to say, if you're looking for a secure place to talk about stuff you really don't want sniffed out or intercepted, give CryptoCat a try. Your private chats are free. Meow. Number two. So all of these game changer email apps, there's so many of them. They can't stop, they won't stop. But the latest is an app called Square One Mailbox. It was suggested to me by a friend and I think he's a pretty cool guy. So I gave it a whirl and I think it's got promise because it's about helping you categorize and then prioritize the kinds of emails that you get. So here's how it works specifically. You just hook it up into your Gmail or your Google Apps accounts. And yes, it only works with Google Mail for now. And as your mail starts coming in, you start putting contacts in categories like VIP or friends or work or travel or finance and so on. By the way, these are all default categories. You can delete them, you can add new ones, whatever. With each filing though, Square One starts to understand who's important to you and what kinds of emails you actually need a push notification for and then which emails can wait. It'll organize and pre-sort your email into a dashboard and then let you do the rest. Now keep in mind, it's not hiding your unimportant emails. They're not going anywhere. They're all still there. You're just not getting interrupted by them. Because I don't know about you, but I only want to type out email replies on my iPhone if I absolutely have to and it's something that can't wait. I'm out and about, man. The team at Square One promises that you'll be surprised how quiet your phone gets when it only notifies you about the things you immediately care about. So I like the sound of that. I'm going to give Square One Mail a go and see if that's actually true. Serenity now! Number three. Speaking of Gmail, I am fully aware that some of you are quite happy with Google's official Gmail app for iPhone or like all these other email apps are irrelevant. So I don't want to pull you away from that if it's working for you. What I do want to do is make sure that you know when you get a nice new feature set and today you do. Gmail now has background app refresh. This is a long time coming, meaning that it's fetching your mail even when it's not open so you don't have to keep opening up the app just to find out who sent you something. That does require iOS 7 and at least one type of notification, like a badge or alert or a banner to be turned on, but you know how notifications work. Another cool little extra is what Google calls simplified sign-in. So let's say you sign into Gmail, you'll now automatically be signed into Google Maps and Google Drive and Google Chrome automatically if you have those apps too. Not a huge thing, but a very convenient one. 
This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by our friends at Gazelle. You want a new iPhone or iPad or any other gadget? Maybe you just got a new iPhone and your old one's sitting around? Gazelle wants to buy your used iPhone or iPad or smartphone for cash. What you can do is go to Gazelle, that's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot -E com, and then enter whatever item you have that's just laying around. Tell Gazelle the condition that it's in, you know, how much storage is in that, and don't worry if it's all beat up. They'll even buy broken iPhones and iPads. Then Gazelle will give you a risk-free offer for your gadget or your gadgets, and they'll even throw in free shipping. When it's time for Gazelle to pay you, you get paid fast by check, PayPal, or get an extra 5% with an Amazon gift card. You get paid in cash. Payment is fast within just a few days of your item being received by Gazelle. And when I say it's risk-free, I mean offers are good for 30 days. So your offer is locked in. It gives you time to transfer data or set up your new device or just be lazy. Gazelle will also wipe your data completely for free. It's trustworthy. The company has paid out a lot of money, over $100 million to over 700,000 customers. And it's just easy. That free shipping is nice, and there's a fast process. No listing hassles at all. What's your iPhone worth? Take a minute and go to gazelle.com to find out. Do it now because your iPhone may lose value the longer you wait. Thanks to our friends at Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of i5. Number four. All right, we're on a Google tear this week, so let's just let the good times roll. Okay, so I got a question for you. Where's your next vacation going to be? Because I'm tentatively thinking I might want to go to Iceland, the land of Bjork and glaciers and, I don't know, vodka, I'll find out. What I definitely don't have is any comprehension of the Icelandic language. In situations like these, I usually just go into Safari or Chrome, and then I fire up Google Translate in order to translate a word or a phrase works nicely. However, that's actually the hard way. The easy way would be just to type the phrase into the Google Translate app. It just renders better, has a nice drop-down menu for a really, really comprehensive list of languages. Not only that, but when you get your translation, you can then play the audio version to learn how a pronunciation actually sounds. Icelandic is really hard, by the way. Or you just hold your iPhone up if you're on holiday and you need to communicate something quickly so someone else can read it. Not only that, but you can speak your phrase into the app. Do people in Iceland drink vodka? Or you can even write it and Google will attempt to understand what you've written. I imagine that's probably good for, I don't know, characters you might not have access to on your own keyboard. For me, it would be Arabic or Hebrew or something like that. In any case, Google Translate, the app, is way better than Google Translate on the mobile web. I'm feeling very silly for not knowing about it earlier. And if you're going on a trip soon or you just love the study of linguistics, get it. Get it now. Number five. So let's finish off with a couple duh tips that came into the i5 mailbag at i5 at twit.tv. First one comes from Tyler, who writes, in the phone app, you can simply add contacts right from the app. Just type in a phone number as if you're going to call someone, but then tap the phone number at the top instead of pressing call. It'll then ask you if you want to create a new contact or add to existing contact. Then boom, you now have a new way to create a contact and you can go back to your phone app and the number will still be on the screen ready to call. I actually really love this. How many times have you quickly called someone and then hung up really fast so that they would just be in your recent calls and then you could add them as a contact? No longer necessary. All right, next uh, tip comes from Forrest, who lives in Australia, who writes, in the native iPhone podcasts app, there was always the problem of having a new podcast automatically playing when the current podcast has finished. To counter this problem, I decided to use the sleep timer and noticed that there's a setting to stop playing podcasts when the current podcast is finished. Who knew? Well, Forrest, as someone whose entire life is based around the idea of making sure podcasts are easy as possible to download and listen to and enjoy, I appreciate this very much. Thank you, Forrest, for keeping me employed. If you ever hear or see a great app or trick here on i5 and you want to go back over it or pass it along to somebody who needs it, just hop on over to our show notes at twit.tv slash i5. That's where our links are, also where you can subscribe to the show with the feed of your choice. Subscriptions are always free, by the way. Email us at i5 at twit.tv, leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane, this is i5 for the iPhone, and we'll see you right here next week. Thanks for watching.